All right, so we're going to talk about the long tail keyword strategy now, and I think it'll work to illustrate what that is by actually illustrating it. So I'm going to make a little drawing here. I'm going to create a vertical axis and a horizontal axis. And then on the horizontal, I will write I will write um, keyword. And on the vertical, I will write frequency. So keyword, frequency. Then. I'll draw my line, something like this. So what that is, is the long tail keyword strategy. And what it means is, there are some keywords here, for example, that are going to be used a lot. Their frequency is very high. Web design. We saw 1.6 billion results. A lot of people use that keyword. There's some keywords out over here then. Affordable web design for restaurants in San Diego that less people are going to use. Now, this should keep tapering our hospital from the blue. This keeps just going lower and lower. This one keeps getting higher and higher, lower and lower. Um, so at this point over here, there are those keywords then that less people are using. So less and less and less people are using it here. That's the long tail keyword strategy. We want to figure out what are the keywords that are going to be less overused. Because we're a needle in a haystack over here. We still are one over here. But we're a needle in a haystack in a haystack over here. And when we develop a keyword strategy that's a little bit more niche, a little bit more targeted, that's how you're going to reach the audience that cares. This long tail strategy wasn't only or hasn't only been applied to uh, keywords in SEO. It applies also to, to the new economy. Sometimes they call it the sharing economy, the Etsy economy. I don't know if you've heard it that way, but that is I can go to Walmart or Target or one of those big stores and they have everything for everyone. Well, they have a lot of things for a lot of people, but not perhaps things for me specifically. So at Etsy, I can go find this one-of-a-kind, unique wooden phone case that I'm not going to find at Target or Best Buy or Fry's or whatever. That's a long tail in, in that aspect, in that there are things that are very unique for a unique amount of people, but are still economically viable. Rather than trying to be Walmart over here, I can be Etsy over here. And so it also applies for our keywords. Um, if we look at my handout now, I'll put this in the I'll put this drawing in the network folder a little later, along with my notes. But if we go back to the notes, I'm gonna write a few things here. So long tail keyword strategy. What are the unique words that less people are using? That fewer people are looking for? But passionate people are looking for? Passion defined in many ways. But I'm a restaurant, and I need a website. Am I going to go with one of those big box web design studios? Maybe a smaller studio, but with great reviews? One of the big studios might give me terrible customer service, because I read that on their Yelp. But then this smaller one here, maybe it's not more affordable, but it's better customer service. And it's specifically for me as a restaurant rather than any web designer that I didn't do a website for any kind of company and therefore not very unique. 
And so that is uh, something we're going to address in the handout. But we should also think deeply about these three concepts here, because um, that's part of our planning, and planning is always valuable in any endeavor. But we need here to talk about the three pillars of modern SEO. I'm going to be saying modern over and over because this stuff changes. We used to work five years ago, ten years ago, um, might not anymore, and it might hurt you. Maybe even three months ago, because the search engines change their algorithms all the time. But things that don't change are these sorts of topics right here. We've got longevity, authority, and content. Longevity. How long have you had your online presence? Online presence. Not necessarily a website, but maybe your eBay store. Maybe your Facebook page. How long have you been online? Your company or your presence. I oftentimes talk about in this and most of my classes in terms of companies. I'll talk about companies or products or brands or whatever, but you don't have to be a company. You don't have to uh, you know, have a business license or anything like that. You could be trying to get more gigs for your band. You could be trying to get more <laughs> fame for your watercolor paintings. You could be wanting more people to read your fascinating political blog. Whatever it is you're trying to do online, that's your presence. So if I keep saying business over and over, it still applies to what you're trying to do. But I just need to pick a word. So your online presence. The more it exists, the better. If your website has been around 10 years and your competitor started five years ago, you have an advantage. And vice versa. If your competitor started 10 years ago and you've started this year, they have an advantage. They've simply been around longer. Because they've been around longer, it's going to be harder to take them down. That Jacob Tyler site, we can look it up. We can look up any website. How long has it existed? We'll do that in a moment. How long has that website existed? It's 10 years? Uh, mine's not 10 years. What else? How am I going to compete? I'm going to compete with these two things, authority and content. Authority relates to why with the search engines rank you well. Why would they put you on page one as opposed to ten? Or number one on page one as opposed to number seven on page one? Why would the search engines rank you well? And that is closely tied to content. So for lack of a better word, the stuff you create online. So these two are very tied together. Is the stuff that you create online worthy enough to get you ranked? And the longer you do it, the better. So if you're just going to start your website, you have the disadvantage of longevity. But you've got the advantages of knowing about authority and content. And so content, some very quick examples, blogs, social media, mailing lists, on and on and on. I'll show you another list a little later about many more ideas. But the stuff that you create, that blog post about, um, let's say I am a realtor, and I'm going to be writing blogs once in a while, and I'm going to be talking about the top five um, pitfalls when buying a home that I overpaid for this, and that I didn't do that well enough. I'm going to write these blogs to give free advice, because some of that free advice is going to... It's like bait. I'm putting out bait, I'm going to catch a fish. So some of these blog posts are going to be bait for people to read it, to like it, and to say, he knows what he's talking about, I need to buy a house, I might reach out to him. I might be tweeting, I'm putting stuff on Facebook, maybe something once every week, and um, in there I'm sharing interesting, valuable things, and that's also going to entice people to follow me on social media. Well, I get followers on social media so that I have a captive audience. 
when I have that captive audience, I'm going to post something like for my bakery sale this Saturday, use this coupon. Well, some people are going to come for the to the store and use only that coupon and leave. And some people are going to use that coupon and overspend, which is what I want, and then I will get more sales. So the stuff that you're creating is your content. The more you do it, the more of an authority you become. You're going to be go-to. You're going to be the go-to for a particular topic. And the longer you do it, the better, because there's more of it for the search engines to find. Remember when I did a search for PMD Interactive and it pulled up all of those things, the Twitter, the Facebook, Yelp, blogs, all of that? That's to show you that it also is important to create content online. You might have designed an amazing website and paid $500 for it, uh, $5,000 for it, but you're not blogging on it, you're not posting on Facebook or Twitter, you're not creating YouTube videos, it might not be taking you as far as you can. As it, as it can. And so these three things here we will talk about uh, in detail, of course. For example, let's look, take a quick look at longevity. Uh, let me just confirm something here. Okay, so let's go to the web and let's go to this address. HTTP colon slash slash whois dot ican dot org. So w h o i s dot i c a n n dot o r g. Ican whois dot ican dot org. Ican is uh, stands for something like the Infern the Internet Corporation. I think it's the Infern Internet. Corporation for Assigned Network Names. Basically, they keep track of all the domain names of the world. It's like kind of like the phone book of the internet. Every website address is basically stored there. And so what we can do is we can look up information about any website. Let's say under Enter Domain Name, we want to look up one of my websites. Under domain, you can look up yours or your competitors, whatever, but we can look up mine, vmcink.net. That's one of my older websites, vmcink.net. And click look up. It might ask you to type in the secret words so that it lets you see it. Okay. So it's got information, contact information about the person behind the site. Registrar, this website was created at GoDaddy.com. Status of it, some technical stuff there. Important dates, created 2002. I've had that website since my birthday, 2002. It was a gift to myself. So more than a decade. Almost 15 years ago, I've had that website. Now, the first website, uh, I believe, was from 1987, which is funny because the web was invented in 1989, but there was a website in 87, uh, 20 years ago next year. No, 30 years ago. So we can look up any website. We can look up the competitor's website here. And that's how you can check which is the older one. And that's one possible reason why your competitor keeps getting number one and you don't. Obviously, you cannot change this. There's no way to go back in time and fix this. There's no record form that you can fill in to request an earlier date. It's impossible. So either your website exists for a while or it doesn't. But this is interesting to look up. For example, we can look up this college, sdce.edu. Um, San Diego Community College, Kent Kieser, Glenn Bowers, etc. Here we go. 2004. This college has had a website since 2004. And hopefully they don't forget to renew it because it's going to expire this year. 
And one more for fun, apple.com. Nineteen eighty seven. Again, the web didn't exist until nineteen eighty nine. They've had a website, a domain name since that time. It was probably an internal network and such. But um, the point of this is to look up the longevity of your competitors. You can't do much about it, but this could be showing you why they rank higher than you. So if we can't do much about longevity, let's talk about content and authority. You become an authority through your content. And content is the stuff you create. I showed you a few examples here. Let me show you an example from one of my colleagues' blogs about many ideas for content marketing. That's another buzzword that people use nowadays. I'll put it back at the top here. Content marketing. SEO, SEM, content marketing. That's another keyword you're going to hear nowadays more if you're in the industry. I think regular people are starting to hear about SEO, but eventually you might hear more about content marketing. And that's just a new fancy way of saying this, all of this. You've got a website, you've got content, you need to market it, you need to get traffic for it. So I'm going to show you this website of one of my colleagues who wrote a blog post about ideas of content that you can create. Let's go to brandgraphics.com spelled gfx brand gfx brandgraphics.com we'll go directly to the blog slash blog brandgfx.com brandgraphics.com slash blog this is a company that we've worked with and um, here they've got a blog we've got a blog everyone's got a blog everyone should have a blog because you can create content that will get found by the search engines content that can be s shared on twitter pinterest whatever to get you more traffic i teach a class on social media i think next month it starts i believe it's four weeks long and what i do in that class is one network per day one social network we spend on the first day we talk about all about Twitter the next day we talk all about Google Plus the next time all about Facebook the next time all about Instagram whatever we we have four days we delve into one network deeply and there's a part one and a part two in part two we talk about LinkedIn we talk about YouTube and one more that I'm not remembering but social media is valuable because I see something like this 80 20 20 percent of your input produces 80 percent of your output I like that I'm gonna share it on Twitter and then that's going to bring traffic back to this website that's the basic point of social media to publish and publicize something to get you more traffic but in this blog there's a particular article that I think is useful for you so on the search box on the right side, search for the keyword comprehensive. Search for comprehensive, and then you should get a result. Number one, the comprehensive list of ways to market your business. So you should see a result March 2013, updated 2015. Go ahead and uh, follow that link. Comprehensive list of ways to market your business. And then it says this is actually not comprehensive. It's always changing. New techniques appear, disappear. So it would be it's this title is better than the almost comprehensive, always expanding, never complete list of ways to market your business. And what we got here are a lot of ideas of marketing. Now, this would be the perfect blog post if there were links for more explanation and examples. But you are able to, for example, I don't know what what a webinar is. You 
can select the keyword webinar right there and right click it and most web browsers nowadays have a built-in search so if you don't know what that is advertorial I can select it right click it and search and it'll search Bing Yahoo whatever Google and it'll give you information but this is more of a springboard for you to think about ways to reach more of an audience some easier than others do video marketing like do videos on YouTube Vimeo or on your website do podcasts go to presentations or trade shows conventions engage in SEO and SEM write blogs volunteer do business cards just like everything classic comes back final we've got business cards again so if you've got a business card and no one else does and you meet someone you give them your business card because you don't see business cards like before that's gonna stick with people link exchange coupons thank you letters literal letters I saw a great blog post the other day about that, about, you know, we've become such a culture of email and instant messages and such that once you get a real thing in the mail with nice paper and embossed and all that, this is amazing. I want to hire them. Well, short-form video, so Vine and Instagram, animated GIFs, doing online surveys. Again, all of these things are things for you to think about. You, you need to search them your own, and you're going to find plenty of articles about what they are and how to do it. And they, they range in effort and, and, and difficulty and such. Find a university or professional course in your area and offer to be a guest speaker. So you'd be a guest speaker for your realty, you know, your tips on realty. And then at the end of the presentation, people will always ask you, what's your business card? What's your website? That could get you more referrals, more traffic. So you think outside the box. It's not just your website, it's your social media. Are you creating infographics? Are you doing online surveys uh, are you doing link exchanges I don't know what that is you look it up uh, are you doing print advertising that's still valuable and so the purpose if you stand back the purpose of this blog is to drive traffic to this site because it has a valuable article and then it has a way to share on social media. I might like this and share it with my colleagues on LinkedIn. So I've got, let's say, 40 connections on LinkedIn. So now that blog post reached 40 people. And what if one of those people on LinkedIn has a thousand connections and they shared it? Now I've reached a thousand forty people. So that's the value of having social media, the ability to share your content because people you could get a connector, a person that will get your stuff shared and connect it to more people. So those are ideas for marketing. But all of this stuff is regarded regarding planning. And the biggest way to plan is to go back to the long tail keyword strategy. So any questions before we, we move over to that? Okay, uh, one more thing before I forget. Because sir, sir, SEO is always changing, you have to keep up with it. One way to keep up with it are good websites. And here's one that I recommend. SearchEngineLand.com SearchEngineLand.com This is a blog that writes an article every day, pretty much, uh, about the topics of SEO. What's new, what's changing, what to avoid. Let's see today. Back, all about the changes to Google's ad layout on desktop search results. So Google changes all the time. They've got a new layout. What do we need to know about it? Show me the money following the PPC keywords that make dollars and cents. As I said, we are going to focus on free stuff 
but paid search still is valuable, especially to get a foothold in a crowded space. So here might be a good article to read about what's an effective way to do that. Confirmed. Google to stop showing ads on right side of desktop search results. That's what I'm seeing here. Notice there's now a big empty space on the right side that used to be full of ads. That's good for the user, because I don't want to see ads. That's bad for companies, because now more people are going to fight to be on the main line right there. I'm going to need to pay probably even more to get there, whereas I could have had to pay maybe, let's say, $20 to get on the main line and only you know fourteen dollars to get on the sideline now there's only one main line more slots uh, that that are gonna get fought for and Google will happily take more money for it Bing still has on the side ads so instead of now it being so expensive to be on the side the sideline of Google I might use that money over on Bing Think like it was a three day old, three, three day old um, post. Article, right? mm -hmm. Let's see. February 19th. SEO is a moving target because it has to be. Once a technique is known to the good guys, it's known to the bad guys, the hackers and the spammers and everyone. And so then they abuse it. The technique of basic keywords used to be the right technique, but then it changed because the spammers put in a bunch of irrelevant keywords. Now you have to be specific. Now you have to engage in other things, SEM for example. So the algorithm changes, the rules change, the goalposts change, and you think that's annoying, I spent so much time learning the old techniques and Google changed it. Well, either play by the game or play by the rule or don't play the game. And if you don't play the games of the search engines, then you're not going to get found because less and less and less people are using the phone book. And so here we will look next week at the official manual, the official SEO techniques, the do's and the don'ts of Google and Bing next week, but they're still not going to tell you everything. Because if Bing reveals how part of their algorithm works, Google will look at it and develop their own version of it, and vice versa. Or the spammers will take advantage of that formula. So not every technique is known. But websites like this and many others conduct tests to figure out. It's like any good, any good bit of science. You have a hypothesis, you test it, you get results, you make conclusions. They started to do tests. What if we search with these keywords with this web browser on this day and time? What if we do it from this location? What about if we do it on a Mac? What if, about if we do it on mobile? They run tech tests. And here they're saying that they're seeing in their tests they're starting to remove the extra ads on the side. Confirmed after testing. And so there's plenty of others out there. We'll talk about more later. But this is one of the ones that I would read on a regular basis to keep up to date with it all. And notice it's divided into SEO, SEM, local, because that's its own art and science to get found by locals. Any questions so far? Okay, so I am going to go back to my handout now. Now we'll, now we'll look at this handout I gave you. Again, you can print it uh, on the next break. But let's open the, that handout, Campos SEO 1 Long Tail. I'll give you a couple of other handouts later, but this one Nowadays, search engines don't rank your site very well unless you have good content. It's not just about simple keywords anymore. You're not going to be found when people search for Italian restaurants. You will have a better chance of being found by authentic Italian food in Chula Vista. 
So it's about the long tail of keywords. If you understand your niche better, you'll be able to potentially rank better. In this activity, you'll define yours. And notice I use the hedge word, potentially, because one bad thing about this industry of SEO is that, um, well, let me say it like this. The good thing about this is that anyone can become an SEO guru. The bad thing is that anyone can become an SEO guru. Anyone can read a little here and there, take a class or two, and they're a guru, um, as long as someone is willing to pay. So the problem is that sometimes people will use techniques that aren't so good. And if they say, you are going to rank better in one month, guaranteed, three months, guaranteed, two weeks, guaranteed, it's not a good guarantee, because this stuff could really be based on a lot of factors, and therefore it's never a good idea to work with a company that guarantees a timetable of results. <coughs> Question? Yeah, um, it seems like it's, there's a lot of hit and miss, right? That's part of how you would be describing the vision and intrigue the keywords. Is there somehow you would, you would be able to find out in what the top dogs, the ones that are always on top, they are using as far as keywords and somehow are trying to copy the keywords? You could all go to your uh, website position? Yeah, there's a couple of ways to see what the competition is doing. One is through the search engines. Once we create an account with Webmaster Tools next week, we'll be able to sort of do those searches from behind the scenes to see what's going on. We'll do that next time. And another way is the old-fashioned way is to do a little competitor analysis, which is part of what this assignment is right now also. So we'll be able to see what the competition is doing and how to do it better. And so this could take a while. It could be complex. When my company is hired by a client, we do a variation of this because we want to learn as much as we can about the client in order to give them the best results. Let's say they are hiring us to do their social media. Well, obviously, we need to know about all their products, how they write their copy and such, how to sell their product. We don't know that when we get hired. We can do it, but we don't know it yet. So we need to know as much as we can about the company. If we are trying to get more traffic for the company, we need to develop key keywords, long tail keywords. And so here is a way to, to work on that, to know as much as possible. If you're going to do this yourself, if you're not going to hire everyone, great. This is an activity that will help you with that. We've got two ways. So I'll tell you in general, and then we'll kind of do it a little bit together. We won't do it together completely. This is not homework. You don't have to turn it in. I forgot to say at the beginning of the day, but there's no homework in this class. There's no grades. There's no certificate. You don't get anything like that out of it. You get hopefully something tangible, the, te the techniques and the ideas of SEO to apply it directly so that maybe you get more hits, more sales, more views, whatever you're trying to do. So this is not an assignment that you're going to turn in. I can look at it and give you my opinions if you want. And we'll kind of do a little bit of it together, but it's not, it's not a real assignment. In general, we're going to do two kinds of competitor analysis where we are going to search keywords, basic keywords first, and then long tail keywords second. And what we'll do is we'll search for a simple keyword. On the first page of results, we're going to see what real companies exist. Not the Yelp result, not the pay-per-click result, real companies. Not the Wikipedia article. I want to see a real company that might be a real result for me. And I'm going to do a little reconnaissance. I'm going to check what are their, what's their title, what does their site look like, um, good and bad about it, and such. I'm just going to gather information. And I might not have the experience of a web designer or SEO guru to understand you know, the buzzwords, but I know what I like, I know what I don't like, I know what I would be jealous of, I know what I could say I'm doing better. And then on the second, we'll do a variation of it. So let's go to your Start menu. And let's search for the application Word. We're going to launch Word. You can write this on regular paper, or I would recommend on Word, because we can copy and paste. We're going to copy and paste a lot. So launch Word. If you brought a USB flash drive, you want to save this there, because if you don't, it will be erased. These computers automatically erase everything you do to them when you turn them off. So if you save this on the desktop and you come back next week, it will no longer be there. 
So once Word starts up, you're going to select the blank template. Blank document. Okay, on the top left corner, let's click the little save icon. Classic floppy disk. Go ahead and save. I'm going to save mine on the desktop because I, I don't have a USB, but if you've got a USB, you should save it. And title here, uh, let's just put today's date. Today's date, CA, competitor analysis. I'm just saving this so I can make some notes. And at the top, I'll write competitor analysis. Based on keywords. And the first one I'm going to search for, which is a basic or generic keyword, I'm going to search for, let's say, uh, comic book shops. So whatever you want to search for, basic keyword, don't get too complex with a location and very, very specific. I just want to find comic book shops. Obviously in San Diego, I don't care about them in New York, but I'm not going to get that specific yet. That's my keyword, my generic keyword. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to check results on Google and Bing. Google results. Bing results as many as we want. In the handout, I recommend three. But that's way too small of a sample. So, I'm going to search comic book shops first in first in uh, Google. It's going to want to give you suggestions, just ignore the suggestions. But uh, you're going to get results you might get some of these results up here about, um, you know, these this beautiful call out over here. I call it the hero image. You might get results there. I'm going to skip those for the moment. Not that those are paid ads or whatever, but those have the have the the head start of also having a Google Google page a Google Plus page or a Google Business page and therefore people can leave reviews and such. It is valuable to look at those pages but I'm going to skip them for the moment and I'm going to go to the organic results. First result is the comic shop locator. I don't want that. Next is Yelp. Next is SoCalComics.com. Okay, that's a real result. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select, I'm going to drag, click and drag and select that result and copy it. Right click copy. I'm going to copy that and I'm going to paste it into Word. But I recommend you right click and select this option here. Keep text only. If you know control C to copy and control V to paste, I wouldn't do control V because that's going to paste it like this with the distracting color and the indenting and the italics and all of that. Control V will give you a plain old paste too much format. I want the basic text only. I'm going to focus on the content, not the, not, not the icing on the cake. So keep text only. Right click, keep text only. This is one result. Southern California Comics, Southern California something something cuts off. SoCalComics.com Folks, we've been asked more often than any can count about ordering variants for sale at the store. The, art, the below article was written by comic book writer, and then it cuts off. So the very first organic result, I'm searching for the keywords, comic book shops. It hit the word comics, variation of comic. It hit over here comics also. And then... Um, store instead of shop. 
and then right here, comic. So, based on that search, I will gather a few more results. There's also kamikaze, comic books and more. Okay, I'm going to select that, copy it, paste it, right-click, paste text only. So in the title of both of them, the title is this first item. I see comics, <coughs> books. I see over there comics with a location. And then the shop, Kamikaze. Join instructor Lauren Becker Downey at Kamikaze Comics, books and more, in. So it should be no, surpri no surprise <coughs> that while the rest of San Diego's comic shops... Okay, so again, the keywords. I keep seeing comics a bit more than comic. <coughs> I saw store up here. I saw shop down here. And I'll do one more. San Diego list. Nope. Comics and stuff. Okay. I'll grab that one. Paste it. Comic books, collectible toys, comics, and stuff. Website, comics dash and stuff. We have the largest selection of comic books and collectible toys in San Diego. Stop by. We want to be your one stop shop for everything entertaining. So notice my exact keywords didn't show up anywhere in that exact way. Comic book shops. And the one that had the most direct of those keywords is actually third. Comic books shop. What I'm showing you here is how competitive this is. With these generic keywords, the search engines, the algorithm, the technique to show you results is different than it used to be. It's going to try to understand your search query as much as possible to try to give you what it thinks you really want. I'm looking at the competition and I'm also going to make notes because I'm seeing that there's that they're mentioning not just comics, they're mentioning more, they're mentioning toys, they're all mentioning San Diego, even though one might be in Mission Valley and one in City Heights, they still are mentioning the, the keyword San Diego. So I'm going to make a note here seem to use comics more than comic. Use San Diego keyword. I'm going to see whatever pops up here. Make a note of that is whatever pops up here to help me understand what the competition is doing. My comic shop didn't show up there. Well, I need to see what the competition is doing and what they're doing that I'm not doing. I would go to whois.ican.org and look up how long have these sites existed. Maybe this has been around since 2000. Maybe this one's been around since 2010. Maybe that one's been there since 1998. I don't know. You have to look, at them, look them up, and the longer they are, that is one of the reasons why they might be higher than your result. So for example here, this shop, SoCal Comics, created in 2009, I'm no, sorry, 2000, 
this one up here, 1997. And the result shows that the one from 97 is way up here. We also have the preferential treatment in that they are up here, but they've also got a Google Plus um, page. So this is what I would be looking up and making notes of. And furthermore, I would actually swallow my pride and give the competition a little traffic because I need to then do more reconnaissance. I'm going to actually click on a result, SoCalComics.com, and then I'm going to look at their site, and I might not have the language of a web designer, but I'm going to... Um, I'm going to write what I like, what I don't like, what they have that I don't have, <coughs> what stands out positively or negatively. So this is the number one result organically. And so it's got classic comic books at the top, it's got the, the share, the social media button so people can follow on Instagram and Twitter and such. Contact information, hours of operation, maps on Google events. A lot of a uh, lot of detail. So on the sidebar, it talks all about. So there's like a, a blog post over here with a bunch of other keywords that could help you get found. So it's definitely got a lot of content. So I would write for my notes here a lot of content to help get found by or with. They've written a lot, a lot of keywords, but not keyword stuffing. There's a difference between writing good keywords and keyword stuffing. On my notes here, let me mention black hat SEO, white hat SEO. Techniques that are bad for you in the long term. For example, keyword stuffing. If you take this class and decide it's complicated, I'm going to hire one, someone, great. But if then you are about to hire someone that says, yeah, we're going to develop your keywords, we're going to put them on your address, we're going to put them on your title, we're going to put them on this paragraph on the footer, we're going to put them everywhere. Those two keywords. That's keyword stuffing. Trying to do the techniques that worked five or ten years ago by putting the same keywords over and over and over um, artificially throughout your site. When you talk to a professional and they know what they're talking about, they're going to talk to you in a, with a variety of concepts. Um, not just one keyword over and over. So your website is similar in that you're not going to have that one or two or even three keywords over and over and over. You're going to have five, six, seven long tail keywords spread out throughout your site in a natural way, such as writing a blog post about a phrase. <coughs> one of my clients here is a Mexican food restaurant and they serve a lot of great interesting exotic food such as chapulines. Does anyone know what chapulines are? Yes, what are they? Crickets. Fried crickets. So, delicious. sounds delicious. A little lime, a little chili. Very crispy. So, <laughs> full of protein and sustainable too. So that, <laughs> organic, fair trade, vegan. Not vegan, but um, the thing is, there's a blog post on that website, Mexican Food Restaurant, titled, What are Chapulines? That's exactly what someone would be searching for. That result would then appear, their blog post would appear in their results, 
because not everyone is, is, is creating content about that. Very few people eat them uh, in this part of the world. And so they've got a blog post that we wrote with those keywords, when people search, their blog post appears, giving traffic back to the website. That's the opposite of the old techniques of keyword stuffing. I, I want to get found by that keyword Chapulinas. I'm going to get originalchapulinas.com. I'm going to put Chapulinas as the very first word in my first paragraph. I'm going to put it in the footer. I'm going to put it here, 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 here. No, that's keyword stuffing. You're artificially trying to use that keyword in an artificial way. A real way would be, what are Chapulinas? Long tail keyword and making a blog post about it. So that is white hat SEO, the good techniques. And who defines good and bad? The search engines, because we are trying to get found by the search engines, the good techniques, such as blogging, social media, So the good techniques are white hat SEO, the black, bad techniques are black hat SEO, and that comes from the classic cowboy movies, where the bad guys came into town, shot up the place, and took over. What kind of hat were they wearing? Black hat. Black hat. And when the sheriff came in to clean up the town, yep. white hat. There you go. Good techniques, bad techniques of SEO. A list of changes. There are techniques that were white hat that are no longer white hat, that are abused and therefore are only used by the spammers, because the spammers don't care, they want to make a quick sale. You're not a spammer, you want to build authentic traffic. And another one that I, that I just wrote here, Black Hat, is EMD. Not EDM, that's another class. <coughs> EMD uh, are exact match domains. Which of these are you going to trust more? Victor's uh, homeopathy.com or authentic affordable homeopathy san diego.com. Well, this one is the exact match domain. These are the exact keywords that I think someone is going to search for. Yes, but this is the technique spammers do. This is the white hat technique, um, where you don't have to get the exact keywords in your title anymore. It used to be you wanted your keywords in your title. Victor's Dog Walkers San Diego dot com. You wanted that exact keyword in your title. But that now is not as important anymore, going toward the realm of irrelevant, because the spammers have abused it. Anyone can set up a website. Anyone can set up a hundred websites, if you've got the money for it. And so, something like that is not good anymore. This one is, is better here. But it doesn't have to... doesn't have to be exact match anymore because before you found out about it what is a Facebook what is a Twitter what is a Google what is a Flickr Twitter all of these things they have they have no meaning until they've got this meaning developed obviously through time and marketing and use and such but you don't see websites anymore, legitimate websites that are like obviously hitting you over the head about what they are on their title anymore. Slack.com. Does anyone know what Slack is? Slack is one of the most important software out there for group collaboration. It, has, it makes no mention of that in the name. Slack sounds like the opposite. I'm going <laughs> to slack off and not do my work. But it's one of the most biggest companies out there for getting, getting the job done collaboratively. So you don't need an exact match domain anymore. If you have to choose between these two, the search engine is going to give more priority to this one because it's less spammy. This one's got all the keywords, but that's keyword stuff.
It's going to go with this one. Plus, for people, search engines are also going to tell us over and over, optimize for people, not, by, not for the search engines. If you just mechanically follow all the advice for the search engine, that's also detrimental. Isn't that ironic? I'm following all their rules, and they're going to say, don't follow all the rules. It's all, you're targeting the search engines, not people. So this is also that, target people. A person's name, so that it connects with people. And what we do, dot com. That's it. And it also rolls off the tongue better than this. And that looks better on a business card, and on a tweet, and such. You want to be real. You want to be more to geared toward people than the search engines. So when I see this over here, SoCalComics.com, okay, that's fine. That's got the keyword comics, but it's not super, super stuffed. You know, they're using the slang SoCal instead of San Diego, original San Diego Comics.com. This one's even more off the beaten path, Kamikaze. They're having fun with their name there, and it's got the keyword comic, but then Kazi, Kamikaze, and then comics and stuff. Notice, in the old days, comics no dashes and stuff. In the old days, probably the other guys had a higher result, but here, even with the slightly awkward dashes, because you have to tell someone, visit my website, comicsandstuff.com, comics-in-stuff.com, and say, do I spell the dash or do I write the dash? It's kind of an awkward name, but again, <laughs> it doesn't matter if you've got all of these other things, the content, building authority, and your longevity. This site's been around since, I don't know, 15 years. So you're going to write the good, the bad, the positive, the negative. One big negative is this is way too long. It's going on and on. This is really needs to be broken up into page one, page two, etc., etc. I like that it shows all the people, all the friendly faces behind the counter and such but it just goes on and on and on. It really needs to be <laughs> condensed, so I'll make a note of that. Front page too long. Again, I might not have the terminology of a seasoned web designer. You don't have to have that. You, have, you just write your opinions about the site, the good and the bad, what you like, what you don't, what they're doing that you're not doing. And as you do more of this reconnaissance, as this competitor analysis, you're going to see what the trends are. You're going to see what's working for them, what you need to do, but better. I'll go back and look at the next result. Comic Easy. <laughs> Definitely more modern design. Look at how this one is using these keywords <coughs> as links. People might be searching for Doctor Who, The Walking Dead, very popular. For the Claremont store, it's an active link there. Photo gallery. Now I think their color scheme could be improved because on the projector here you can't read this, can you? And on my monitor is also a little hard to read. So they went toward the, the area of very cool design, and oftentimes that can lead to poor design. You can't read that. And the, the content is what matters, not the design, the content. <coughs> so I'm going to say for these guys, I like the design. It seems like they're also trying to lose the control. Yeah. The first one could be more for like the old timer yeah, comer, yeah. collectors, and this one is like for the younger people. Yeah. I like the design, very trendy. So for the previous one, seems to target. Collectors rather than readers, or um, you know, old timers in comics, and then this one looks. So I'm saying this is of course all subjective. Like the design seems to target trendy or younger audience. But I'm going to say hard to read in places. Looks like they've got an app also. I don't think I saw anything about an app on the other one. But I'm seeing here also, here's our Yelp, our Foursquare, our Facebook, our YouTube, our Twitter. So what else are you doing besides 
your website. Because I might not visit your website a lot, but I might be on Facebook all day long, and I'm going to see your stuff on Facebook. So lots of lots of articles, it seems, lots of updates right on the top. Hmm. This might need to be updated. It's still saying December 12th. This is another one that's got a pretty long home page. They also need to they also need to cut down the content. And then right here, you can't see it at all, but there's a line of text right here. It's black text on a on a brown background. You can't see it at all, and I can barely see it on my monitor here. So readability of course. Because it's a local business, it also has that important stuff there. Um, phone number and address and such. And what I'm seeing is right at the top, above the fold, I have this information. Above the fold is a, um, is a term that you hear in SEO and web design. It comes from newspapers. So let's say it's a newspaper. Classic newspaper, remember those. Classic newspaper, tall, sheet like this. The front page, very important. All the most important news of the day goes on the front page. But when they sell these, they fold them and they stack them. So the most, most important has to be above the fold. Because you're not going to see that until you pick it up and buy it. So that's an old concept there. The most important, above the fold. In web design, we still have the concept of above the fold, but it's what's the first screen full of information that you see before you have to scroll above the fold. But because it's a computer, it doesn't quite work with a newspaper. All newspapers have a standard size, basically. But a website, this uh, monitor here is actually different than yours. It's smaller, actually, even though it's physically larger. It's smaller, so you can see more of it on, your, on the projector. So my above the fold only goes this far here before it cuts off. If you visit that site, I'm sure you're going to see more. And then if you visit it on a mobile device, you'll see it also even different. So the point is you want to get your most important information as high up to the top as possible without being detrimental to your design. And I see it here. Phone number and address of the locations. So I'm going to write uh, contact info above the fold. Good. Yeah, you want to make it as simple as possible for the person to accomplish what they want to. If they're going to buy something from you and they have to click seven links to do it, you're going to lose them. If you're going to make it easy with a simple buy now button right there, you're going to keep them. If you're trying to get someone to call you for a one-on-one -on -one meeting, your phone number better be right away easy to find instead of having to look around I guess I'll go look on the about page, it's not there. I guess I'll go look at the contact page, now I found it. So yeah, you do want to make your designs the most uh, straightforward. There's no right or wrong answer, and there's still a lot of debate about what's good to have your page broken up into different sections or to have a long front page. There's no right or wrong answer, and as a matter of fact, on one of my personal sites, I do have the 
I'm trying out the longer home page. Where on the home page I've got this stuff and this stuff. And there's no other pages, it's just on one page. But I do swap out the information and update the stuff on the sides and such. Obviously I haven't done it very recently. But um, you need to decide which of the two will work. Now it's not so long as these ones that I'm showing you here. I think they are just doing it on accident. I don't think they're doing it on purpose to show so much. They just keep adding it. There is a section about the blog that goes on and on and on. That one is in its own section where people can go to page 2, page 3, page 4. But the most important information, I'm showing it right away on the home page. These guys that I'm showing here don't seem to get that idea. They're just kind of throwing it all there. Although they do have subsections, go read the testimonials, the photo gallery, whatever. So there's no true consensus at the moment, which is better, dividing it up into pieces or pages or one long page. I'm going to side a little bit more toward dividing it into relevant pages because, again, are we designing or, or optimizing for the search engines or for people? The search engines are telling you for people. So me as a person, I don't want to scroll and scroll and scroll. Uh, I want to kind of break it up into different pieces so I can go look at something that I care about. So I'm going to recommend, and from the articles that I'm seeing mostly, I want to um, recommend to try to break up your content into reasonable chunks. Not that everything needs its own page, but group things into pages, into chunks, that would make sense. And I'll look at one more. Uh, what was the other one? Comics and stuff. <clears throat> this one is much more low-key than the other ones. It focuses more on the categories and the hot things. Adventure Time is hot. Any babies are still, I guess. Doctor Who always is. And then their products right at the top, and then a basket, and buy, and your history. So in that, in this case, it's a little feels a little bit more geared toward buying online, whereas the other ones feel like come to the store. This one is more like buy online. I don't get any preview of any products, so I might make a note. I don't see any products right away. I'd like to see something more visually interesting right right away. There is a mailing list right there, although they don't really say what's the benefit. I'm going to make a note here and some advice. Um, mailing lists. Mailing. It, this one's got a mailing list, not optimized. And what I mean by that is mailing lists are good, but entice people to enroll or to join. By simply throwing up a little box there that says subscribe or follow our mailing list. Why? What are you what are you providing there? Maybe write something like join our mailing list for exclusive coupons. Subscribe to us for the latest pre sale information. <clears throat> How are you going to entice people to, en to enroll, to subscribe? What's in it for them? And so if you tell them you're, they're going to get coupons, that's going to work. How many newsletters are you on that you get coupons and such? Um, or how many have you been on throughout your time? Probably a few, and I know for myself, for example, I get the Fry's newsletter, and uh, I have to be very strong and not read it as much as I want to because there's so many great things in it that I want to buy. With so many great coupons that are always enticing me. So you're going to create something that you'll entice people to, uh, to subscribe for. So on this case, it just says subscribe, but I see no reason to. Maybe if it says subscribe and get 5% off your next purchase. That might be nice. Uh, some sort of incentive.
So this is uh, what we're doing is competitor analysis. We've checked out a few examples of the competition. Um, we've used this basic keyword and we're starting to build an idea of what the competition looks like. I would want to do this also on Bing. I may get some results on Bing that are not these three companies. So I would, I would also search Bing, and if I get the same results, I would search, keep going until I find results of other companies. And I would build these, this competitor analysis to help me decide what I need to do. We're going to take one more break, and then when we come back, we're going to look at the second tactic. This tactic that we just did is the old way. It's valuable for gaining some insight, but it's the old way. We're going to do the new way in a moment, which is very similar, but with some nuances. It's 3 o'clock. Let's take a, one more 10-minute break. When we come back at 3.10, we're going to look at that and some other techniques. And then, at, like I said, at the end of the day, if you'd like to stay for the last few minutes, we can put your site up on the board, and I'll talk about it briefly, what's good, what's bad, and so forth. We're back at 3.10.